Hello everybody, this is Manu S and welcome back to another quick eternal news update. We have two more spoilers for the new campaign Dead Reckoning, so let's take a look. <laughs> okay, so the first one is Rip Knife Assassin. Uh, it's kind of innocuous, but also very solid. It's basically, I would argue, in a way slightly worse uh, Rakano Outlaw. In some cases a bit better, but overall a bit worse, I think. Let me explain. So basically, um, both are 2 cost 2-2 uh, Warcry with another ability. In case of Outlaw, it's Quick Draw. In case of Rip Knife Assassin, it's Deadly. The main difference being, you want to play both early because of Warcry. And against a lot of early units, um, Outlaw's Quick Draw means he can freely attack without being blocked, making him a lot harder to be blocked, and uh, you also have the support of combat tricks and uh, burn spells together with the quick draw that make it even harder to stop. Like for example, a five health unit can't stop it if you have a torch. While with rib knife assassin, um, all the small units that, or like low health units, like say a dawn walker and a lot of other stuff that can't block other than jump block and outlaw can trade block a rib knife assassin so that's a, a big downside and but on the flip side when outlaw is stalled out and you don't have support rib knife assassin can still attack into big units the problem however is though that deadly is just much better of a defensive than an offensive ability most of the time and warcry is an offensive one so i'm not super happy about the combination of deadly and warcry but it still makes for the uh, case that once an outlaw couldn't attack anymore and is basically useless and blank, a rip knife assassin can just hang back and threaten to trade with the best attacker from the opponent. So that's an upside. And <clears throat> the fact that it's an unseen and another solid shadow two drop is definitely li nice since, um, yeah, shadow doesn't have a lot of those and uh, additional unseens make make it more likely to play a deck, build a deck that has unseen synergies. Although, like a lot of people, I would have probably preferred it to be a gunslinger, but that might have even been too good in the light of recent uh, recent events and recent things, so no surprise there. But yeah, it's a solid card, I like it, but um, I think it's gonna be a bit weaker than Rakano Outlaw overall, <clears throat> partially also because of the colors. And next, we have another sweet one. It's called Tripwire Grenadine. I really like this card, it's pretty cool. Um, I think it's gonna be a really nice addition for Grenadines, given that um, Spark Hatcher has been very lackluster and some people, including myself and Buckwheat, have currently cut it. Still not 100% sure if it's correct, because that kind of uh, is missing some early game consistency without them, but the card is pretty weak and Tripwire Grenadine might be just the right replacement. <clears throat> Coming down and being able to shoot down some random small early unit of the opponent, like their one drop or some of the utility units like Trailmaker, Temple Scribe, Ember Acolyte, you, you see, especially against time decks, the card has a lot of targets, Dawnwalker. And there's a bunch of other things like shooting off Aegis, which is pretty nice in uh, Granadines. It's basically, it basically does everything that a virus favor does, except you get a 1 2 that can ping again when it dies instead of a power, which is pretty nice. And it has a relevant unit type, and the Entomb can be controlled with sacrifice effects. You can even like use a Devour on the opponent's turn to get a fast spell 1 damage ping. So that's another nice upside. So yeah, I really like this card. It's really cool. And at least in Grenadines, I think it's going to be a very welcome addition. Not sure if and where else. But yeah, it's a it's a neat little role player that adds to the options for a bunch of decks. I like it. That's it uh, again already. Just two more spoilers. As soon as we have like two or three more spoilers, you'll hear from me again. I usually don't make a video for just one spoiler, unless it's a big one and a really impactful one, then I might make a video for just one spoiler, because people are waiting for the uh, for my scoop on it. 
But yeah, there you have it. We got we got two nice uncommon two drop role players in two colors for certain decks. Nice additions. This is the kind of card that I expect from a campaign. We're not gonna get a lot of like high impact flashy things. Tavrot Tavrot was a bit more unique, I think, in that regard. But I really expect some robust, not underwhelming, not overwhelming role player cards that uh, can smooth out and fill out uh, decks and patch certain holes uh, without warping things too much. And these cards are exactly that. All right, that's it for this Eternal News episode again. Hope you guys uh, like the two cards as much as I do and uh, my review of them. Let me know in the comments what you think. And if you enjoyed Eternal News, please like down below. And of course, if you want to keep them coming and also want to be informed when there's more content, please subscribe to the channel down below and turn on the notification icon. Thanks for watching everyone, this is Eternal News with Dead Reckoning Spoilers, I'm Manu S and I'm out.